poppin'? Smello back at you with another video, and today what we're getting into is kicks and 808s. Basically, how to keep them from canceling each other out, and how to get it to a place where everything is bumping good, but doing it without side chaining because I really don't like side chaining. I have done it in probably two mixes out of a lot of beats that I've made this year but it's something that I almost never do and I try to avoid at any cost. I may do a tutorial on that in the future, but that's not today. We getting into some alternatives that are more simple than that. So be sure to listen to this with either headphones that have a good low end or on monitor speakers, because if you listen to it on the phone, it only goes up to 300 Hertz. You're not gonna hear everything that's going on in the low end. So make sure you listen to this on good speakers. So do me a favor, put a like on the video, subscribe and click the bell to get notified. Let's get into it. So let's listen to some of the samples that we have. Let's play the patterns. Play with the second combo. If you notice on each of these, when it gets to the higher notes, as far as the G5, it sounds like the bump is being pulled from under the kick in the 808. And that is because in the sub frequencies, there's clashing, the frequencies don't agree with each other and they cancel each other out. To illustrate one example of this, we're gonna listen to two kicks layered over each other. They're the same exact kick. So you hear how it sounds, it still has a thump. Let's take one kick and move it down 100 cents as far as the pitch. Still hits, move it 200. Still kinda hits, but let's move it to 500. Watch what happens. It cancels out the bump a little bit. When you look at where the kick peaks in the low end, as far as the sub frequencies, around here, around 50 Hertz, it hits in the same place every time. When you look at the sub frequencies of the 808, they're jumping around as far as the peak in the low end. Now, if we look at the first one, somewhere around 30 hertz. But for some reason, when it hits that G note, it's somewhere around 50 hertz, and it begins to conflict with the kick. So without getting too deep, it jumps all over the place, but when it gets too close to the 50 hertz, as far as the peak, it begins to interfere with the kick. I'm gonna go over some of the solutions I use to avoid this problem. The first tip that I have is try to avoid using high notes. When you're using a kick and an 808, the E note or above can usually cause these types of problems. So what we're gonna do in the melody that we have, we're gonna take this G and just transpose it down. We highlighted it, held control, and pushed the down arrow so that it could go down an octave. Let's play it. The second method that I have is tuning your kick to a higher note. So that is accomplished one of two ways. Let's listen to this example right here. So that is a much higher 808 pattern with a lot of high notes. It actually starts on the F note. Now, what you can do with the kick, you can hold shift on the piano roll and transpose it up and just listen to how it sounds with the 808. Until you get it to a point where you're satisfied with how it sounds, or what you can do is tune it from the sampler. So you open the sampler, click that right there where the envelope symbol is, and on the piano, right click any of these notes until you find one that you like. And you usually wanna go between C5 and C4. Sounds a lot better. The next method that I have is mixing your kicks 
higher than your 808s. So I have a whole tutorial about clipping your kicks and things like that. You should check that out. But we can clip the kick by moving the velocity for each note to the maximum velocity. We can also move this volume knob. Let's listen to it now. The problem doesn't persist because the kick is overpowering the bump in the 808. That's another way to do it. And I would recommend at least a four decibel difference or more, but adjust it to whatever sounds good to you and the mix for your beat. The next method that I have is using a punchier kick. Now, this can be combined with some of the other stuff that I already mentioned, but using a punchier kick alone can penetrate through that 808 bump and it'll sound a lot smoother and not have the issues that a deeper tone kick would have. So let's listen to some of these samples right now. Do you hear the difference? I'm gonna play them one more time. The last one has less low end than the other kicks, but it has more mid to high frequencies and it's a lot punchier. So we're gonna play it with all the examples and we're gonna play it at the regular volume. Now that's without me clipping it, that's without me turning it up, that is just a raw sound. And it penetrates a lot better than a kick that is more thumpy and has more low end frequency. So a punchier kick is always gonna penetrate a lot better than a deeper frequency kick. The next method would be to cut the kick or the bump from the 808. So when you look at an 808, let's listen to it. You hear the bump at the front, what we're gonna do is move the sample start. So we're gonna take it a little bit back. You see we did about 3%. It just comes in like that now. Not as hard. Let's listen to it now. Let's listen to how it sounded before. You see when it hits that A sharp and that C, it rips away the whole low end bump. When we take away a little bit, doesn't rip away that bump. Let's try it with the other example. We're gonna take off something like 3% again, um, maybe four. And for the last tip that I have, you can actually control the envelope of the 808. So with this first example that we have, we're gonna open a sampler for the 808. We have the bump on it still. We're going to go and turn on the envelope. Now the first thing that you wanna do is make sure you have the attack all the way forward, push the hold out, take all these other knobs all the way down. When you do that as well, if you watch my 808 tutorial, you know to go in and push Control L to pretty much make everything long at that point. So let's listen to the regular one. Now there are a few tricks you can do. So the first thing is you can move the attack a little bit back and that's gonna give the kick some space on the transient. Let's listen to it. sounds a lot better even though it kind of fades in. Now what you can also do with that is take the tension down to bend it and give it a little bit more space. So let's move the attack a little bit forward. We got the tension all the way down so it's all the way bent. Let's listen to it. We could push the attack a bit forward a little bit. It penetrates a lot better than the normal one. Let's listen to it again without it. You see when it hits the two highest notes? Let's listen to it again. It sounds a lot better with just this envelope on it. But another thing that you could do 
is push the delay back just a little bit just to give it that space. We push it back 2%. Let's listen to it. The kick has all the space it needs. So playing with the envelope in those ways can open up more space for the kick. Let's do it with the last example. Let's compare. Penetrates a lot better. So I hope you got a lot of value out of that. The Combustion 2 kit is done. It'll be dropping soon. Be on the lookout for that. But other than that, I'll be coming with more tutorials. I'll see y'all another day. Somehow, some way. I'm out.